New research out today shows Australian workplaces are home to high rates of stress and depression. The study looked at more than 4,000 people over a seven-year period. And it seems many employees are reluctant to speak out about the problem. Graham Cowan is the author of the study and he joins us now from Sydney. Graham Cowan, good morning and thanks for making time. Thanks, Virginia. What are the origins of this study? Where did it come from? Uh, I myself crashed and burned the workplace about uh, 10 years ago and I've since told my story very publicly and the thing that I've found is that uh, when I tell my story, people feel comfortable telling me their story and it seems everyone has a story. But when I went back to the workplace after my recovery, there was just huge denial that there were issues around it. And so I decided to actually reach out to those that were actually struggling and to ask them. And 86% said they you know, just weren't comfortable talking about it with their colleagues because they felt it compromised their career. Compromised their career. So if they actually spoke out about how they were struggling, uh, they, they, they wouldn't advance. So you believe, and you've found in this survey as well, that many people are, are suffering in silence. In, in what way are they suffering? Well, they're not seeking help. They're not telling people what's going on for them. And so it's often seen as a performance management issue rather than actual a medical or, or mental health issue. Mm. And, and that means that people aren't getting to the right places. That's, that's the big thing. So what sort of stress or what kind of problems are we talking about here? I, I know there'll be a lot of people watching this this morning rolling their eyes and thinking it's just the, it's the endless culture of complaint about how tough people are doing. Life is tough. Sometimes work is difficult. Sometimes stress comes out of work. I mean, we need to sort of be specific here about what's just the kind of ordinary stress that you can expect and, and should learn to co cope with and what is not. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things is there's never been more change in the Australian economy. You know, people are asked to being do more with less. And yet, in the last 15 years, there's been 25,000 books on change management, but 70% of them, 70% of change management fails to meet its objectives. And the reason is leaders fail to take account of the mental health issues that happen with people. Now, 12% of people rate their stress at eight, nine or 10 out of, on a 10 point scale every day. And the cost of that is 34% of lost productivity through absenteeism and presenteeism. So whether it's extreme stress or whether it's actual clinical depression or clinical anxiety disorder, it's, a, it's the biggest cause of lost productivity and no one's talking about it. What do you think should be done in relation to it? I think there's three very simple things that can be done. The first thing is to have an are you okay culture. We had are you okay day last year, but an are you okay culture is where people, first of all, take responsibility for their own health, make sure they do things that keeps themselves well. The second thing is to keep out an eye out for colleagues that are struggling and to ask them, are you okay? The second thing, and, and this I think is incredibly important, is that we're not going to change this culture of silence overnight. And so it's important that people can access good practical resources anonymously on the internet or on a smartphone app where they don't have to flag it to other people, but mm. they get good practical resources. And the third thing is, is to have for organisations to provide a panel of mental health savvy GPs. One of the things that isn't commonly known is that depression and anxiety now account for 26% of GP visits. And yet when a medical student spends six years studying to be a, a GP, they only spend six hours of lectures on depression and anxiety. There's a huge mismatch. Yeah, well, particularly when you, when you, as you say, point out just how significant a health issue that is in the community. That's clearly not nearly enough discussion or not nearly enough training in relation to that, that important health issue. And just finally, before I let you go this morning, Graham, do you have a sense that, that managers, that managers and management and the higher ups, they understand the, the significance of this for them in terms of them being an effective and productive workplace, but also in terms of the health of their employees? Some are, but see, this isn't just restricted to employees. Two weeks ago, there was the CEO of Swistel committed suicide. The chief financial officer of Zurich committed suicide in Switzerland in the space of one week. So I think there is greater understanding, but there can only be progress if people admit it's there and start taking practical steps to address it. Good to talk to you today, Graeme. Thanks so much. Thank you.
And if you need help, you can always contact Lifeline's 24-hour counselling service. That's on 131114. Or you can speak to someone at Beyond Blue or Kids Helpline. And all the phone lines are there on the screen for you.